Thanks, Ty. Good morning. I'm Melissa Dark again. Um, I retired from Purdue University a year ago. I, I started working in cybersecurity in 2000 when Jean Spafford hired me at Sirius, the Center for Education and Research in Information Assurance and Security. I spent most of the first 15 years focused on cybersecurity education initiatives that were at the post-secondary level. And in 2015, I became co-PI for a project that has integrated cybersecurity into advanced placement computer science principles. And I also hosted one of the first seven gen cyber camps. And it was a teacher camp. And when I had that camp, I had a teacher who said to me, a high school teacher, can't you just tell me, Melissa, what universities want us to teach at the high school level as it pertains to cybersecurity? I've been with you all summer, enjoyed this summer camp, but now I just need you to tell me what I'm supposed to teach. And that's what I'll teach. And I said, I actually can't, can't tell you that. You know, in 2015, we didn't even have cybersecurity curriculum guidelines for undergraduate programs. And as you know, cybersecurity has rested in computer science. Cybersecurity has rested in information technology. It has found a home in business schools at our universities and our colleges. And then in some places, Purdue being one of them, it's a multidisciplinary program. And so I said, no, you know, right now cybersecurity spans a lot of disciplines at the post-secondary level, and we don't have a defined set of guidelines for undergraduate programs. I really can't answer that question for you, but I thought it was a good question. So in 2015, the APCSP project and then GenCyber, those two things really got me working in the K-12 space in cybersecurity. And I started in cybersecurity in 2000. <clears throat> At the time I started, there were seven centers of academic excellence. Purdue was one of them. So I watched the huge explosion over 15, 20 years from seven schools to more than 300 at the collegiate level. And I started feeling around 2015 that we're, we're at the beginning of a similar wave in K-12. And so finally I decided last year to retire from Purdue I run a nonprofit company focused on cybersecurity education. So our session today is called Bridge Building. Um, some of you might be familiar with the report that came out about 10 years ago called Running on Empty. Some of you might be familiar with a report that came out about 20 years ago called Rising Above the Gathering Storm. Rising Above the Gathering Storm was a report that came out with the intention of catalyzing engineering education at the secondary level because we were facing a huge workforce shortage in the United States in the fields of engineering. Running on Empty was the report that came out focused on computer science education and what we need to do to build computer science education at a meaningful level down in K-12 so that we are providing for the pipeline students who would either go right to the workforce qualified to enter computing jobs or would be prepared to go on to the post-secondary level and study computing. I feel like we might be at the beginning of something similar with cybersecurity 
We don't have a big seminal report to propel us forward. Um, but personally, I could see that or feel that within the next three to five years, that that might be something um, that our community could champion um, that would help transform what's happening in cybersecurity education K-12. <clears throat> but this particular presentation, so, so I wanted to set the stage because I, I think we want strategy conversation here today. <clears throat> Um, we're very interested also in taking practical, actionable steps to bring meaningful cybersecurity education to K-12. But this particular conversation ultimately, in my mind, is a strategy conversation. And it's about building bridges um, to, to bring cybersecurity education to K-12 in a meaningful way. So I'm going to connect the two things, the strategy conversation to a set of cybersecurity guidelines that um, I helped develop, Jenny helped develop. Um, and one of the participants, I think, in this particular session is Mark Lepker. Mark is my good colleague at the Cyber Center for Education and Innovation. And CCEI provided the funding for the development of these guidelines. So let me jump into the guidelines and then we'll, we'll um, eventually circle back around. Um, so we want to share them. We want to share the guidelines with you because ultimately we want to get to these questions. What really should we be teaching in cybersecurity? What should we be teaching at the high school level? What are the implications of that for what we should be teaching at the middle school level? What are the implications of that for what we should be teaching at the, the elementary school level? I'm familiar with what's happening in several states. I know in some states, cybersecurity is being yoked into computer science. And I know in other states, um, it's finding its home primarily in CTE. And then I know of some instances where it's crossing over. Um, where should it be taught? And what are the implications if it gets put into CS or it gets put into CTE? What are the long-term implications for um, addressing workforce shortages? I, I think that's a, an important strategy question. Um, what about certifications? Um, do we have the right balance or it, as we develop and deploy programs at the high school level that prepare students to sit for certifications? Is that the thing that we should be promoting the most in order to try to address the workforce shortage? Um, should, should we be trying to encourage students more to go on and to get an associate or a bachelor's degree? I, I think there's always limited resources. And so I'm just trying to ask some long range questions that would guide some of the actions over the next um, three to five to 10 years in, in this space. Um, so ultimately, you know, what would, what would create an infrastructure that would support large scale, efficient, equitable integration of cybersecurity? And we're, because we're gonna talk about the guidelines, we're right now mostly focused on high school. So we can go to the next one, Jenny. So I already told you about this question. Um, and <clears throat> as I started thinking about those other questions, should it be in CS, should it be in CTE? What about certification? How do you prepare a national workforce pipeline? And, and I, I thought about this teacher's question. Um, I decided that I wanted to try to answer this question. What cybersecurity content do universities want high schools to teach? I came from the post-secondary level and I have a lot of colleagues and a strong network at the post-secondary level. 
And so I thought I was in a good position to try to take a first pass at answering that. So two years ago, wrote a proposal, got together a team. We published a first draft of, a, of guidelines saying what we think should be taught in a high school cybersecurity course or program that was published in July 2019. We've wanted to take a very rigorous community-based approach. So we put it out for peer review. That peer review ran from December through February um, 19 to December of 2019 to February of 2020. And we updated and we republished the guidelines in March of 2020. Yeah, we will definitely let you know, Rachel, where you can access the guidelines. So the, if you would Google the Cyber Center for Education and Innovation, um, that's one place where immediately you can access the guidelines. It does ask you for a registration, but the registration, as soon as you have set up your username and password, it's immediate. So you should then just take your username and password and, and log in to access the, the guidelines. Um, so I think I've already mentioned these things. Um, I, I did want to point out Northrop Grumman, NSA, um, and then I think also the Hewlett Foundation have helped support this. They have had grant money, Northrop Grumman and Hewlett Foundation go to CCEI that has helped support this initiative. Hmm. We'll go to the next one. So let me tell you just a little bit about the guidelines. Um, the guidelines were built using a model called Understanding by Design. It's a very popular, well-used, tested, tried model for developing curriculum guidelines, published by Wiggins and McTee. It's been used in several other disciplines and most recently to develop the Advanced Placement Computer Science Principles Curriculum Framework. We studied several frameworks and we decided that this one was, <coughs> excuse me, most appropriate for us. So when you access the guidelines, um, there's a, a preface that tells you what is in each one of these big ideas. You see the big ideas there in a circle. Um, cybersecurity ethics, establishing trust, ubiquitous connectivity, data security, system security, adversarial thinking, risk, and implications. So there's a short preface, there are some essential questions, and then each one of those eight big ideas is further characterized, elaborated, described, through enduring understandings, there are about two to four enduring understandings for each big idea. Each enduring understanding is further elaborated, characterized by learning objectives, and each learning objective is further defined by essential knowledge statements. So in my mind, it's a tree structure. Um, so we can go to the next slide, Jenny. So I said that we initially published it in 2019. Um, in 2019, two colleagues from the University of Alabama Huntsville picked up the guidelines and they started developing a year long course for deaf and hard of hearing students at the high school level. And they're doing teacher training this week they're training teachers at three schools for deaf and hard of hearing students across the nation. And those three schools, I believe it's Alabama, Colorado, and Texas, I believe, um, will be pilot testing their course this year. Um, the guidelines have also been the basis of a year long course in Colorado. The guidelines have been the basis of a semester-long course in Colorado. 
a grant was recently funded that is got university and community college participation from the North East, the Southeast, the Midwest, the Northwest, and the Southwest. So the five big regions of the country. And we will be developing an online course for rural and homeschooled students over the course of the next year. And then Jenny and I led a team of educators who developed a year long course. And last week, Jenny and I got done teaching um, 13 Maryland teachers, one New Hampshire teacher, how to teach our course, the introduction to the challenge of cybersecurity. So we can go to the next slide. And I think that's you, Jenny. That is me. So we wanted to briefly describe uh, the course. So once you access the guidelines, you'll see um, that there are several dimensions across those eight big ideas that um, provide a foundation for students to engage with cybersecurity. And so we use that as the basis to develop this course. Uh, there were five of us co-developing. Uh, we uh, spent some time developing a planning and pacing guide to consider how to parse out the, the guidelines. So they aren't meant to be taught in order. Right now, ethics is number one, but that doesn't mean you have to begin with ethics in a course. Uh, so several of the course iterations that have already been um, designed based on the guidelines have integrated ethics throughout. Um, and so that's something we attempted to do as well. We first started with a bookend approach, having it at the beginning and end, and there's still, I think, much more of a focus at that point. Um, but then we started to integrate it in units where it really made sense to make those ethical connections. And the rest of the big ideas as well are integrated throughout each unit, depending on the focus um, of those. So it's a full year course. We also, because of working with the group of teachers that we had, and I think as um, the case across many states, there's several iterations of cybersecurity. Some are teaching a year long course, some a semester long, some a quarter or nine week, um, and several trying to integrate it in various courses, APCSP, uh, foundations courses. So we wanted to design something that could be um, adaptable. So we. And internally, we called it modular. Uh, so those nine units, there is a progression if you're teaching it across the course, but we designed it in a way that if you were teaching a semester, it made sense when you finished about with course or unit five. Um, and we talked through and we'll continue talking about ways to modify some of the units depending on your student population. So for example, unit three is a very basic um, kind of foundation to what is computing, what are computers, what is hardware, software. Um, that's their first introduction to uh, a cyber range and using Linux. Um, so depending on its sequence in your curriculum, those types of units might be shrunk down um, or expanded. Um, so our overarching goal was to introduce students to, again, the foundational concepts, principles, and tools. Um, very student-centered, very hands-on, lots of activities. I already mentioned the lab. Um, we counted, there's about 24 labs if you do the entire course, um, long iteration of it. Um, but in addition to those hands-on experiences in a cyber range, the um, US cyber range, we also have other hands-on activities outside the range that um, help students engage in the concepts that are, we're trying to, to teach. And then there's a couple of large scale projects towards the end of the course. One is a model NSC activity, that's unit eight. Um, that course pulls in a lot of the implications and ethics um, learning objectives from the guidelines. And then a inquiry based project where students uh, propose a defense in depth strategy. So these are the titles of the, the nine units. We don't have time to go into all of these, uh, but wanted to give an introduction and 
right now our proposed planning and pacing guide. Um, working with the teachers last week, several are going to be pilot testing. So there's going to be um, an iteration of the curriculum based off of feedback from teachers and students in the classroom. And part of that I think will be our pacing. So we start with what is cybersecurity? Start exploring those important concepts of risk, adversity, and trust. This is where the CIA uh, triad is introduced, and that CIA triad, as well as ethics, is integrated um, throughout, as well as adversarial thinking. Those are kind of threads that we tried to weave through the remaining units. <clears throat> Unit three I described. Units four, five, and seven are really our technical units. That's where the majority of the labs reside and students engage in um, data software and network security, looking at attacks and um, controls and countermeasures through those seven or three units. Um, unit six, we purposely put between five and seven as a little bit of a break with the highly technical units. Um, so they explore the economics of cybersecurity. It's our uh, shortest unit as well. And then unit eight, I described with that, um, project and unit nine is kind of a capstone um, inquiry based project or could be an extension activity as well. So uh, like Melissa said at the beginning, we thought this presentation would be um, helpful to kind of think more in terms of strategy. Um, Teach Cyber, this effort we've been talking about with the guidelines and using it to design the course is just one effort. There are many others, which is really exciting. I think that that wave of K-12 cybersecurity education is increasing and growing, and um, we're excited to be a part of that. Um, because of that, I think the variety of needs and iterations that we're seeing across states, the breadth, depth, and implementation varies greatly. Um, just within our own small cohort of 14 teachers, we saw that <laughs> wide variety um, existing and, and trying to meet those particular needs is quite challenging, but also um, leading to a lot of creativity. So some states have developed standards for high school cybersecurity courses. We listed a few here. Um, and some have chosen to in incorporate cybersecurity into high school computer science standards. So even at that state level, the um, situating of cybersecurity varies greatly. And then obviously that has implications of how it's taught in classrooms. And several school districts are acting locally, integrating cybersecurity courses, um, clubs, competitions, uh, a variety of approaches to um, integrate cybersecurity. So some questions that we have been facing in our work for the past, I would say couple of years, but more and more as we engage in this work, um, leading to some of you know, our projects and I think others around the country is, we have four listed here. That first one, what should we be teaching? We've talked about led to the guidelines and I think it's a question still that we're, we're exploring and trying to understand. Um, where should it best be taught and when we consider um, the great need of students going into a cybersecurity career pathways where should it be positioned um, maybe both computer science cte um, what influence do certifications have this is something that popped up again in our professional development last week um, not all teachers are um, as concerned with this, but some are very much concerned with the need for certification. And we know funding and, and different things are tied to certifications. Um, so what influence does that have and how that might shape cybersecurity in the future? And then to what extent are, are these efforts provisioning a capable cybersecurity workforce? And I think that's an overarching question that we keep asking and thinking about impact of these efforts collectively. Um, are we moving that needle in a direction that we, we want to? So I think here we wanted to ask what questions you think are big questions right now that need to be answered or at least drive the work that we're all doing. And I think if you add them to the chat box, we can 
see them there. And we're also open to um, if you want to unmute and ask. Well, there are a couple of questions in Whova, if you all wanted to take those now. I looked at those. Thanks, Ty. One of the questions is about the relationship between the guidelines and um, the Virginia computer science standards. Um, a couple of months ago, we had a conversation with Dave Raymond about this, and Dave and some of his team did an alignment, and they sent that to me. And honestly, they sent it to me about three, four weeks ago. But between getting ready for the teacher PD last week and then some personal health commitments to my dad, um, I haven't been able to pick those up yet. But that's the question of how our guidelines um, align to what exists in a state is an important question for us. I have a conversation with some colleagues from the Texas Education Agency this afternoon to pick up that same question. Um, another place where there are already existing standards for cybersecurity at the high school level is Florida. And I need to circle back and connect with Florida sometime September-ish. Um, and then there are some states that don't yet have a pathway or cybersecurity standards. Um, Maryland doesn't have dedicated ones. We've been working a little bit with the Maryland State Department of Education. Hawaii does not yet have, and so we've been coming right along with Hawaii on the on the tails of heels of Maryland. Um, and honestly, we're very open to trying to collaborate and express articulation between a set of state guidelines and our guidelines. Um, I think students, if we want to promote students going to college, and if we want to promote the idea of potentially dual credit or college placement credit, um, I think we'll have to work across state lines, right, because it's entirely possible that a student from Maryland will come to Purdue University in Indiana or a student from Lafayette, Indiana will go to Virginia Tech. Um, so we're very open to working across state lines. The second question is, do I think that the ABET the existence of ABET guidelines will eventually help promote secondary cybersecurity education. I believe it's possible, um, <clears throat> but I think that we need a lot more high quality curriculum. I think we need a lot of efforts to train teachers to teach um, and a lot of ongoing support to, to help teachers continue to grow in their teaching of cybersecurity. And then I do think that third piece about some kind of a placement test or dual credit is a linchpin. Um, so I'll stop there and see what other questions there are. Jenny also asked, were there any other big questions that may go along with this list that's on the screen now? Hey, Melissa, this yeah. is uh, this is David Raymond. Um, Hi, David Raymond. But hey, th thanks for being here. This is this is great. Um, <clears throat> the, so this might be a little bit outside the scope. Of, of this discussion, but uh, I, a conversation that I think is an interesting one and one that we're challenged with is um, is how do we best prepare teachers to to tackle this material? Um, I mean, that's that's in Virginia. We're, we're that that's there's probably some Virginia teachers on on online here, K-12 teachers, and and I think that's a challenge that they foresee or that they're already having and. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I'd, be, I'd definitely be interested in, in your thoughts, or if you've thought any any about that. Um, 
Well, I've been involved in, in Gen Cyber pretty closely for a long time. And I think Gen Cyber has served a lot of purposes um, to get teachers interested. Um, I think my own view is that preparing somebody to teach a discipline takes a long time. I mean, at Purdue University, when a, somebody graduates qualified to teach mathematics, they have a math degree and a math education degree. When they graduate qualified to teach biology or social studies, that same thing is true. And so then you start talking about, wow, really? So, you know, you're trying to give them enough credit hours that they have a math degree. Well, if we were trying to give them enough credit hours that they would have a cybersecurity degree, that's a, that's a lot of depth, right? Um, so maybe eventually we would find schools, universities that would offer a cybersecurity education degree but I think that that's a long way down the road. Like it, it's been a slow road for universities to pick up and offer computer science education majors. And the CS for all initiative and, you know, the 10,000 trained computer science teachers has had a lot of momentum and support and, and funding. Um, so, you know, I try to think about that long range horizon and think, gosh, you know, wouldn't that be cool if we could be there in 10 or 15 years? And then I try to say, okay, so where we are at right now is we've had a lot of gen cyber and cyber patriot, which I think have served teachers well. So probably we need more intermediate things. How do you have programs that support a group of teachers and stay with them over time? You know, that's a question that I have. Um, how do you create another kind of, without, without having a full cybersecurity education degree, how do you create another kind of credential that has value for teachers um, in the workplace? So it's a, it is a credential that they want to get. It's a credential that means something in their schools and in their states. Um, and then how do you provision a program, you know, that stays with them to provide that type of credential? Um, I don't have all of the, I don't, I don't have tangible, actionable steps, but those are the things I think about, David. What do you think about? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you know, you you still have this just sort of a, a bit of an argument in in higher ed whether the whether a cybersecurity undergraduate degree is even a, a thing that should be offered with the sort of the background that maybe you you, you need to call something a cybersecurity degree. So then, um, you know, so so, so requiring a, a, a or, or expecting a high school level teacher to have some sort of a higher education cybersecurity degree is a, is a pretty tough uh, standard to, to meet. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I think what you're right, what we can do right now are things like Gen Cyber. I mean, I, you, you know, I'm a huge Gen Cyber fan and, and continue to be and, and, and we, you know, work really hard in Virginia to, to um, continue teaching Gen Cyber camps at several different colleges and we and, and the predominance of them in Virginia, I think, are teacher camps. Because uh, personally, I think those are, are, you get to more students by getting to more teachers, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think those have been, hopefully those have been very beneficial. And, and um, I don't know, again, there may, there's probably some folks on this discussion that have been to some of those Virginia gen cyber camps. And it would be interesting to get some thoughts on, you know, is, is, that, is that helping? Or are, they, are there ways that we can do that better to, to better prepare teachers to, to be able to teach this material. Um, I don't know, getting, getting the teacher perspective might be helpful. There are a few comments in the chat. Yeah, there's a question, do your guidelines have any plans in 
aligning with the ACM, CCE, CC, cybersecurity guidelines that align with NICE. <laughs> we, yes, we do have plans. <laughs> um, been working towards that. Um, like we talked about with the certifications as well, we are interested in mapping or, or in some way indicating what that alignment looks like. Um, it's a, it, it, it's an important question, and I think on the face of it, looks like it might be, I don't want to say easy, but um, as we dig into it, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, sometimes the development and design are, are quite different, the intention of, of different like certifications or um, guidelines varies a little bit. It's not always a one-to-one -one comparison, so we have been sorting that out and talking with teachers, and um, we have a conversation next week with another teacher to look at um, a, a certification, but that's definitely a priority of ours to do. I wanted to respond um, to David's thought one more time when he mm -hmm. said there's debate in the community about whether cybersecurity should even be taught at the undergraduate level. Um, <clears throat> Purdue, Purdue has commodified it down. You know, we started at a thesis-based master's. And then actually we grew up to a, a PhD. And then it was a pretty big time lag before you started seeing cybersecurity minors and majors at the undergraduate level, but we have them now. Um, I've asked myself the question of how much cybersecurity can meaningfully be taught to high school students. I think that that's a responsible question to ask. Um, and as an offshoot, you know, I mentioned I worked on that project of integrating computers or cybersecurity into the advanced placement computer science principles. Um, and we got a little bit of supplemental funding from NSF to do a small research study to look at whether cert teaching certain topics in cryptography could be appropriate for high school students. Could they grasp them? What were the achievement levels? And I think that some of it can really be, I call it commodified down to the high school level. I, I am at a point where I'm feeling like it's not irresponsible to do that. And so sometimes I wonder if the question at the collegiate level, David, is that it will require a lot of reworking of curriculum um, in order to move your cybersecurity program down to the undergraduate level. And maybe that's where the resistance comes from. Yeah, no, um, yeah, don't get me wrong. I think I think it's absolutely critical that we're teaching cybersecurity topics at the high school level. And I'm, you know, I'm convinced that and I've, so I have two, two students who are high school and college age, two kids who are high school and college age. And I'm convinced that students, by the time they get to college, they have a pretty darn good plan on what they're going to do. And if they haven't been exposed to cybersecurity, then that's out of their list of potential, you know, life choices. And, and we happen to catch some students who were um, computer science or computer engineering majors, and we sort of take them to the dark side and they become cybersecurity at Virginia Tech, they become cybersecurity minors. Um, and I, you know, I think teaching cybersecurity at the high school level and earlier is gonna capture more of these students who say, hey, that's a neat thing. You know, a lot of them are gonna treat that as, as another course that, um, hey, it was kind of interesting, but I, I like biology better. But you know, some of those, yeah. some of those students are gonna say, hey, this is really cool stuff. And um, you know, I wanna do this. Um, but, you know, and, and teaching it at the undergraduate, you know, we, we start at Virginia Tech, we've taught undergraduates cybersecurity topics for many, many years. Um, but we still don't have a cybersecurity major at the undergraduate level. You know, we have a minor right now. And, uh, you know, I think we'll get to a major. But, um, um, you know, that, that's, that's definitely outside of my um, level of influence. But I just do know that there's, that there, you know, there still is that, that tension in some places. David, this is Mark Lepker. Um, I, I, I really appreciate the dialogue that's happening right now over the, you know, where should we be 
um, with education and can we teach a cybersecurity degree, et cetera, et cetera. One of the nice things about the Solarium Commission uh, that just put out the report, uh, they're really honing in on on uh, cyber oriented education. And, and so, uh, you know, we're gonna be putting a working group together uh, from the CCEI uh, to discuss a lot of these issues. And, and that's one of the things we're gonna be talking about is, is, is how do we prepare teachers uh, to appropriately teach this? And, and I think those are dialogues that are, are refreshing and that need to happen. And one of the recommendations that was made is that we engage the universities who are teaching our teachers uh, elementary school teaching is different than college level teaching, which we all know. Um, and so to really start engaging those universities who historically have robust elementary school programs for teaching teachers and, and have those dialogues. So I, I, I agree with you. I, I think it's a great uh, topic to discuss. And, and, and the more we talk about uh, these type of items, the, the further we get down the road. So uh, I really appreciate this dialogue. Thank you. There have been a lot of nice questions and comments in the in the chat. I'm also looking at the time, realizing that we've got about a minute left. Um, I'm going to share my email address. If anybody is is interested in continuing conversation, I would love you to contact me.